What's going on guys? It's Rachel here and welcome back to the YouTube channel. Today we're going to be talking about the differences between the mats that you guys can use with your Cricut. What are the differences about them? What do the colors mean exactly? And what are some examples of materials that you can cut with each mat? This might not seem like something that you know needs to have a whole video about it, but I will urge you to go ahead and watch this if you are a Cricut beginner because you might be shocked to know you might just be using a mat for the wrong material or something like that and there are a lot of new things for all of these new cricketers to learn if you are a cricket beginner I'm sure you're a little overwhelmed as it is and I just want to ease your mind a little bit and let you guys know all the differences between these mats here today so the first thing that I want to mention is that Maker is going to learn which is the ultimate die cutting community if you guys have a die cutting machine that works with SVG or PNG cut files you guys need to click the very first link in the description description below and become a member of Makers Gonna Learn where you guys can get access to over 4,000 digital cut files, 400 fonts, um, amazing printable guides much like this one, a member only Facebook group, free e-courses, commercial licensing, and so much more. Do not hesitate to get all of the education and inspiration needed to master your die cutting machine in the membership. Uh, speaking of the membership and speaking of printable guides, we do have a Cricut printable guide that has all kinds of amazing things in it designed for beginners with a lot of blade charts that show you which blade cuts what material. We have amazing terminal Terminology. We have cheat sheets, easy press temperature charts, and we even have a page dedicated to this video today talking about which mats you need to use for which materials. So if you guys are not already a member of Makers Gonna Learn, you are missing out. Go get your membership today to see what all there is to know about your die cutting machine. Now, without further ado, we're gonna dive into the mats and the differences and all that good stuff. So the first mat that I'll talk about is the light grip mat, which is the blue one. We didn't have a fresh one or a new one today, so this is one that we have used, so sorry about that. But the blue mat is the light grip mat. So that means that it is the least sticky of the Cricut mats. And you're probably thinking, well, why would I want a mat that's not that sticky? Well, you actually use this for a lot of different things. The two things that come to mind first is a very light cardstock and vellum. So if you guys use vellum at all, either clear vellum or you can have uh, cloudy or you know uh, sheer, this is the type of vellum that we have. It's like super, super thin paper, almost like tissue paper, which is another thing that you guys would want to cut on your light grip mat. So tissue paper, vellum, really light card stocks and things like that are something you want to use your light grip mat with. Uh, there's nothing better than a fresh light grip mat. It's really good for all kinds of things um, and we do use them quite often depending on what we're cutting. Uh, but I do have to say it's good to have at least one of all of the Cricut mats on hand uh, just in case you never know what a project will bring. You never know uh, really what you're going to have to you know cut and you want to be well equipped with your paper or excuse me with your mat because it can be really easy to have a project fail not because of a you know a missed cut setting not because of a you know problem with your material but because of a problem with your mat so definitely make sure you are using the correct mat for the materials that you are wanting to cut um, so the blue mat is the light grip mat and that is the least sticky of all of the mats now you can use that mat for different things um, however if you use it for anything a little bit thicker than you know thinner cardstock and things like that, you can actually get to the point where your mat is not you know, adhering well with your material. And that way when it's cutting, when your machine is cutting, your material will actually slide around on your mat and that will create a big problem. It's probably gonna jam in your Cricut and it's gonna be a mess. So make sure that you are careful with which mat you choose. Uh, so next up is the green mat and this is the standard grip mat. This is the regular mat that, uh, you know, you probably use the most. It's standard grip, it's not too sticky and it's not not sticky enough if that makes sense. So this is what you'll use for your vinyls, for your iron-ons. This is glitter iron-on, which you'll actually might want to use this with your strong grip, depending on um, lots of things. So glitter iron-on is very thick, and you actually have to lay this down shiny side down, which means you'll have to lay it out this way. And as you can see, it wants to curl up, you know, for us really, really badly. So you guys might not 
not have a fresh or new uh, standard grip mat to be able to apply your glitter uh, iron onto. So you might need to go ahead and use that very, very strong grip purple mat there. But for normal iron-ons and your vinyls, for cardstocks, I would say ranging from 60 to 110, 120 pound cardstocks is what you'll use that for. Um, yeah, so you can actually use this mat for a lot of different things. This is probably what we use the majority of the time. We use it for a lot of our cardstocks, all of our vinyl and iron-on and things like that. This is the mat that we run and grab the most. It's perfectly sticky for a lot of our projects and it's the one that we have the most of as well um, and the ones that we go through. I would say the ones that we have to throw away the most often are the light grip mats unfortunately. Now you can clean your mats and if you guys would like to see a video all about cleaning your mats I will link it below. Tanner has three amazing methods to how to clean your mats that are really amazing so if you want to see those you can click that link below and watch that video but I just feel like the light grip mats lose their sticky, all of their sticky, so, so quick. We can clean them a couple of times, but after that, they're just not sticky anymore. We kind of have to trash them. So we actually have a habit of using lesser sticky standard grip mats for light grip mats. So we actually don't buy a whole lot of light grip mats anymore because once our standard grip mats don't get that sticky anymore, before we clean them, we'll actually kind of replace our... Uh, light grip mats with these and use these duller mats as light grip mats if that makes sense so these are probably the mats that we use the most we like to have the most backups and the most new ones in the studio next up is our uh fabric grip mat and that is the pink one here so uh it's in the name fabric grip mat so you guys can guess this is what you would use for your fabrics and that is correct you can use this for your leathers for your paper thin leathers here from Cricut. Uh, this is another faux leather in a roll. You can use this mat with your Cricut felt and all of that good stuff. It will cut really, really well. Uh, so that is what this mat is for. It's a little bit stickier and I think that it does really well for all the fabrics that you guys have. Uh, but I will say if you do want to use something other than this for fabric, we would recommend Strong Grip. Uh, now this one also is not fresh, so I'm sorry that it is a used mat, but I, just for demonstration. Uh, so the Strong Grip mat and the Fabric Grip mat are um, pretty similar in my opinion. I think that if we do not have a Fabric Grip mat and we you know, use a Strong Grip mat, our projects always turn out fine, especially if the Strong Grip mat is a little bit used before we use it for fabrics or felts or anything like that. So that uh, fabric grip mat is what you would use all of that with, including your fabrics if you can get them at you know your fabric store or you can get Cricut brand. So you would use all of that good stuff on your fabric grip mat. But if you don't have one, we recommend using your strong grip. So this is the purple mat. It is the strongest adhesive on a mat that Cricut will sell you. Um, and this is for extremely heavy card stocks. This is great for glitter HTV. It's also the mat that you will use if you are using a heavy chipboard, balsa wood, basswood, and things like that. You make you want to make sure you're using your strong grip mat. Uh, like I mentioned before, the worst thing that can happen is that you are using your you know, you, you're using a mat and you apply your material there and you try and cut it and your mat is either not sticky enough or too sticky and it ruins your project. Now, if your mat is too sticky, you will be able to cut your project fine, but removing it from the mat will cause it to tear, rip, break, anything like that and ruin it. If your mat is not sticky enough, during the cutting process, your material will most likely move around on your mat and you'll know that, well, that mat's not sticky enough. So. Those are definitely some signs you guys can look out for as well if you think your mat might not be sticky or it might be too sticky. So you can go up or down in stickiness depending on your project and depending on you know how successful you are with it. But just going through a couple of the um, examples in the book here that we have, it says that the standard grip mat, which is our green mat here, should be used with cardstock, pattern paper, embossed cardstock, iron-on, and vinyl. It says that our strong grip mat, which is our purple mat, should be used for very thick cardstock, glitter cardstock, magnetic material, chipboard, poster board, or fabric with stiffener. Um, let's see, our fabric grip mat, which is our pink one here, 
says that it should be used with fabric, bonded fabric, crepe paper, uh, faux leather, regular fabric, all kinds of stuff you can use that guy with. A uh, crepe paper is another great example though. And then our light grip mat is good for printer paper, which is very thin paper, thin cardstock, vellum, construction paper, uh, vinyl, which, you know, your vinyl would probably have to be a little bit thinner or on the thinner side to use that with. Um, and then like tissue paper is things you want to use that light grip mat for. But guys, this has been a really fun, informative video all about kind of breaking down the mats and letting you guys know some examples of things you can cut with those different mats. I hope that you all learned a lot and had a lot of fun going through this today. Uh, feel free to leave any questions you have down below. Uh, really, the easiest thing that I do if, you know, when I was beginning in Cricut and I wasn't sure if a mat could cut a material, I'll Google it. I'll Google it. Can a Cricut standard grip mat cut uh, printer paper well uh, and it'll it would probably let you know that's a little bit of a strong mat to be using with printer paper maybe try a light grip mat you know really the internet is our friend in a lot of ways but when in doubt guys this amazing Cricut printable guide is awesome so definitely get your membership so you can print this guy and download him and have a lot of fun with him on a daily basis but anyways guys don't forget leave us a comment like this video subscribe if you haven't already to see more amazing crafty videos like this and I will see you you guys in the next video. Bye!